Once you've seen an execution, you can never go back. Once you've seen it, I can't go back. The system has flaws. And that bothers me. Do you think that, that there are racial biases in the justice system? Absolutely. I think you've got a good, good example of that with Thomas Millerell. Certainly. I've had 10 execution dates. And believe me, just having one or two execution dates is enough for anybody to go through in one lifetime. Hello, Thomas. How are you? He was always a good interview because he would always come down to the interview areas for, for anybody who wanted to talk to him, he'd talk to him. I was uh, incarcerated for robbery and murder. All along said that I'm innocent of crime, which it don't really make a lot of difference. It's one of the things that is kind of an unwritten rule that you don't really talk to the offender about the crime that they did. If they volunteer it, fine, let them talk. But I never walked in to Thomas Miller and said, did you do this crime? When I left the prison system, all of a sudden, here comes somebody knocking on my door that wants to help Thomas Miller out. It's on two major court rulings addressing the practice of stacking juries by race. For 20 years, the state of Texas has been trying to execute Thomas Miller L. But his lawyers accused the prosecutors of deliberately setting out to exclude African Americans from the trial jury. And today, in a 6-3 to three ruling, the Supreme Court said the evidence is too powerful. The judge ordered a new trial for Thomas Miller L. Next thing it wound up, a special prosecutor showed up at my doorstep. We were at the precipice, if you will, of trying to make that decision, life or death and undertook to look more into Miller L's background and uh, thoroughly did a vetting of him. Uh, and that led me to uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Sat around two guys drinking coffee and you could see him rear back and talk, oh, Thomas, you know, I remember him well. And there were times we had a many philosophical conversations. I said he'd resolve some things that were some really touchy uh, situations between different offenders and I thought he was pretty much of a peacemaker on death row. He said, uh, Mike, the Thomas that I saw in prison should not be put to death. That he has made a difference and will continue to make a difference uh, while he's living. Well, I just believe there's, there's something besides the death penalty in Texas. I believe that no matter how bad you are, if you get incarcerated, They'll take care of you. That convinced me to stop any pursuit of the death penalty. Uh, Larry had that effect on me, uh, and I was so glad that I spoke to him. And that different perspective uh, turned me around and led to the, the plea to save his life. Man, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, man, this man here is <laughs> Matter of fact, the first person I meet if I ever get out of here and shake hands when I get out of here, that's a real good man. Uh, I recall telling him <laughs> that uh, when I was up for my last execution, and he came and he talked to me, he said, Thomas, he said, I don't know if I'd be able to be there. Uh, and uh, I explained to him that I'd prefer for him to be there because he was a human being. He treats you like a human being, not like an animal or an object. And there's something about being in prison that occurs for both uh, inmates and staff. A uh, lot of times, they lose their humanity. It's a horrible existence to be in a penitentiary in Texas. So did I do him any favors? The rest of his life, this person's gonna be subjected to the prison system. Did I do him any favors? Probably not. But at least they're alive.